your relationships seem to feel like an endless cycle of closeness and craving that closeness, but then when it really starts to take shape, feeling fear and even shutting down, sabotaging or pushing away. Well, if you are caught between this flip-flopping of wanting to be all in and then wanting to run in the other direction, parentification actually may be one of the root causes as to why this is happening to you. So in this video, I'm going to take you through what parentification is and how it actually affects the fearful avoidant attachment style so much and maybe explains a lot of things that you weren't actually expecting. And on top of that, we'll go through five major signs or symptoms that you were parentified as a child, and then four powerful things that we can start doing here and now today that will make all the difference in your relationships. And you may actually find that some of these tips and tools change the way you see yourself forever and the future of your relationships for the long haul. So stay tuned. So first and foremost, parentification in and of itself represents a role reversal where a child takes on the responsibilities that ideally an adult would have, often caring for their parents or even younger siblings at the expense of their own childhood. And this dynamic tends to be something really common with a fearful avoidant attachment style. Yes, it can affect other attachment styles as well, but there tends to be the largest correlation between being parentified and being a fearful avoidant. Oftentimes what you'll see is there is this sense of abandonment that takes place and a distrust of closeness when it comes to somebody being parentified as a child. And really what you'll generally see is somebody who grows up in a household where parentification exists ends up having some particular relationship ramifications as an adult. So I want to give you some examples here first of like how somebody would be parentified. And then I want to talk about the symptoms and see if this is something that you may have some of these symptoms of. So some different examples you may see of somebody being parentified is number one, and often one of the most common ones is the, the child ending up as the emotional caregiver of their adult parents. And so this could be that the child is consistently or frequently relied upon to provide emotional support, listening to the parent's problems or challenges, being a source of comfort during times of distress, or really acting as like the confidant. Um, unfortunately, usually being told things in this confidant role that really exceed what a child should be taking in. So for example, you may have a parent tell you about really terrible things that happened to them in their early childhood when you're still a really young child. And that may be something that you don't know how to cope with or make sense of. You may be told things about one parent by the other parent, things that may actually fracture your relationship with that parent in various forms, or you could see that that may be a reciprocal cycle. You may be told things about the family history that are too big for you to really handle at such a young age. And when I say parentification, I don't mean like this is the 18-year-old adult child who's now moving into their adolescence. I mean that these are generally things if somebody's parentified that they're hearing and seeing and experiencing at a really young age emotionally, like five, six years old. At times where, you know, children can't necessarily make sense of their own experience, let alone these really big adult experiences that are too big for them at that time. Another version of parentification you'd see um, is the household manager. So a child may be responsible for managing all the duties of the household, cooking, cleaning, even times I've seen people, you know, paying the bills and organizing that sort of thing at like nine years old for their parents, or even organizing the family schedule or constantly being the caretaker of many younger siblings would be another form of parentification. And in this form, when you see the caretaker of the younger siblings, you'll generally see the, the child take on the role of the primary caregiver. And this could include like helping all the kids with their homework, feeding them, putting them to bed, um, and, and really in place of the other parent. Now, I'm going to give you one other example of this, but it's not to say that these duties, like doing these things, helping out around the house, being a caretaker at times for younger siblings are bad. It's not to say that like that should never be something that happens, but really we're talking here about parentification when it comes to not the emotional piece, but these physiological pieces like the household manager, the caretaker of the siblings. It, it becomes problematic when 
this is at the expense of the child's childhood. So for example, when the parents are kind of MIA or absent in these roles, and this is really falling on a child, causing them to have to grow up really fast and not actually have that sense of freedom or fun or flexibility that you would ideally want a child to have as they explore their own identity and their own childhood. And so it's really when these things are far too often, when the the child is playing as much or close to as much or sometimes even more of a role as the caregiver for the other siblings than the actual parents are. These types of situations where it becomes um, very problematic and honestly um, has some really important consequences that we're going to talk about in a few minutes. And then another big version of this, which falls more into the emotional parentification side, is if you are the mediator or peacemaker. So if you have a child who acts as that sort of central role to resolve the conflicts between parents, between parents and other siblings, even, or just family members as a whole, trying to keep the peace, trying to prevent arguments in different situations, and often just feeling really responsible and enmeshed emotionally with all of the different members of the family. So all of these things would be examples of parentification. Now, I really want to talk here about some symptoms of if you may have been parentified. And I want to see how many you check off um, of the following. Okay, so we're going to talk about these. And then we're going to talk about one of the most important things, which is what do you actually do about this? So one of the first symptoms that you'll generally see is that this person as an adult feels very responsible to fix everybody or everything around you. Okay. Because obviously if you grew up in a dynamic where it was all about being the fixer of the household, whether it was the household manager, whether it was the peacemaker or a combination of all of those different roles, you know, you'll generally see that you feel like, okay, I have to fix everybody else. Now here's the most important, in my opinion, golden nugget about what it means to be parentified and how this can affect somebody is there's not just this interesting piece of codependency that takes place because you think you have to fix everybody and you're responsible for everybody's feelings, but you will do that at the expense of having your own emotions. And because you often fell into that role at such a young age, part of our behavioral development involves us being able to have somebody mirror back to us and mirror our feelings, be attuned to us, to our experiences. And if you are in that parentified role, generally, one of the biggest casualties in a sense becomes the ability to be mirrored by and attuned to by caregivers. Meaning you are attuning to other people and looking out for them and their feelings, but you may not feel like that is reciprocal. You may not feel like people are attuning to you and you may not feel like you actually are really seen or heard or or loved in a way that you need because you're too busy filling the shoes of something that seems to be missing, causing you to go into more of a survival mode rather than any kind of connection mode that you may be deeply seeking. And you may find symptom number two, feeling like you have to basically perform all the time. Because when you're always on because you're managing the household or this, the other siblings, perhaps if you're in a larger family or, you know, even more so the big ones are going to be, if you feel like you're the peacemaker or you feel like you're the person who in a family situation has to be the emotional confidant for, for other people, that's going to cause you to be in this, this state of essentially being in sympathetic nervous system mode, thinking you always have to be on and doing and showing up and performing And you may feel as an adult, like you are loved for, you know, what you do rather than who you are. And deep down underneath that, you may find this deep, quiet need to be loved for who you actually are and and hope and, and even fantasize about having that in some kind of capacity in the future because of how meaningful that is and because of how much on a deeper level you, you may feel like that's missing, just being loved for who you are and not what you do. Symptom number three, you're generally going to see that you may struggle with deeply buried feelings at periods of time of sadness, of hurt, of your own concern, but feeling like you don't know how to convey those emotions to others. You might be the type of person under that umbrella that's like really good at giving everybody else advice, but not taking your own sort of thing. But really what the the programming is, the conditioning is at a subconscious level here is that you had to adapt and become really proficient and and solid at meeting everybody else's needs 
but you don't actually have much mirroring or modeling for how to listen to your needs, how to have your own boundaries, how to take care of yourself and your own experience. And so as a result of this, it's almost like you feel like you can fix things for others, but don't feel like you can really show up for you. Symptom number four, you will generally feel if you come from a parentified household, like you struggle a little bit more than you'd like to with your own vulnerability. Because again, if you were always solving for everybody else and there was no modeling or conditioning, which was like, hey, space is being held for you and your feelings and what you're experiencing, then it makes it really difficult to be vulnerable. And you may even feel like there was no room for your emotions growing up. There was no space for what you were experiencing or going through because everybody else seemed to be going through so much. And because you were hyper attuning to that, then it feels like you being vulnerable is something that is really not positively reinforced, right? There's no room for that. So you may feel like, okay, there's no room for me. I'm just going to hide that away and stuff that down. And so that comes really with its own dynamic of, of feeling like you are not attuned to, and thus you may actually struggle to really attune to yourself, to feel what you are feeling. And symptom number five, as you can imagine and probably guess, is that you may struggle to identify, honor, or communicate your needs and boundaries to other people, right? You may not even know what your boundaries are or what your needs are because, again, you're so swept up in what everybody else is doing and experiencing around you that it makes it really hard to identify those things. So those are our symptoms. Now, I want to talk about what you can actually do, okay? And I think the first part of this is to honor the fact that it's painful, right? To honor the fact that like, sometimes there's this little grieving process that almost has to exist in, in realizing that you were parentified and realizing that you didn't really get to explore and have fun and have lightness in your life the way that you may have needed as a young child. And you may find, honestly, not to tack on another symptom here, but you may find that sometimes you could be like an extra serious adult in in certain ways, or you may find that you adapt to that and go the way opposite direction, almost out of this rebellion, like this need to never take anything seriously or not take responsibility for your own life and experience as you move into adulthood, because you're rebelling against the feeling of being trapped in a parentified, um, you know, experience as a young adult or as a child. And so, you know, what we have to do here is say, Hey, how has this really affected me? What things am I experiencing now and what can I actually start to do? So we're going to go through these here together, okay? So number one, one of the biggest themes is that you may find like you don't know how to attune to yourself. And at a root cause level, if you don't know how to attune to yourself and to what your feelings are, and you don't feel like you're in your body and able to recognize your true yeses and nos in real time then unfortunately you're going to feel unseen and unheard all the time. Because if you can't hear and experience and see what you're, you're feeling, you definitely can't express it really well to other people. And then you're not giving people the appropriate information they need in in your life to actually consider you. Right? So if you're somebody who's parentified and hasn't done the work on this before, you may actually realize like, I'm not telling people my feelings. And if I'm being radically honest with myself, since I'm not telling people what I'm feeling or needing, I'm actually not giving myself room to be loved in the way that I would need because I'm I'm not telling anybody what that looks like. And so I'm operating from this lack of being able to even experience that. And so one of the first root things to work on is self-attunement. And one of the easiest ways to start with self-attunement is things like, body scans, meditation, um, things that are getting you to just connect to your body and just focus on your internal world instead of constantly being so focused externally. So any kind of practice, even like breath work, um, you know, uh, mindfulness practice, anything that's connecting you back to yourself for 10 minutes a day, just in and of itself can be such a healing experience. And it's from that that we start to feel into our inner worlds and start to know what we're actually experiencing and needing. And then the next step becomes for you to take up space, to actually allow yourself to honor your own needs. 
for you to honor like what it is that you're looking for in your relationships or your life and to have conversations about that. And you may realize that you have needs for growth. You may realize that you have needs for validation or reassurance sometimes. And that might scare you, but that also might be honest in, in various ways. You may realize that you need freedom and that you need boundaries sometimes. You may realize that you need to have more depth in your relationships. Like you may realize all sorts of things, but you know, I want you to take a, an opportunity to dive deeply into that. And I'm going to give you two more points here, but I do want to stay on the topic of needs. If you don't know your needs and you have no idea where to start, you can actually check out fully for free um, for seven days, which will allow you literally the full time to be able to go through the course a course all about needs. There's like a whole list of needs, helps you identify what your needs are. And it's such an important part of like discovering yourself and your truth is knowing what you need as a person. So I will put a link for free to that down below just for a limited time. Our next piece is once you've like attuned to yourself more and felt your own emotions and practice that, because sometimes, and you may actually feel relatively equipped to do that. But then the moment you're around people that goes out the window. So, you know, you want to practice attuning to yourself well around other people as well. And then once you've started to identify what your needs are, the next thing you want to do is learn what your boundaries are because parentified kids end up as boundaryless adults the vast majority of the time. And you may be sitting here listening to this going, yeah, but I eventually set boundaries when I'm angry or frustrated enough. And, you know, I just want to highlight that, unfortunately, that's not good boundary setting. You know, setting boundaries from a place of anger and resentment means that there was a lot of boundaries you didn't set first that then caused you to feel so frustrated or resentful that then this got expressed from a place of anger. And when we express boundaries from a place of anger, there's strong downsides to that. So, you know, you want to make sure that you're learning your boundaries so that you can set them in real time, like in the moment that you're having a boundary be violated. And that could just look like, if somebody asks something from you at work and you're like, oh, I don't have time for that today, just to say, I don't have time for that. Instead of saying yes, getting frustrated, staying late, feeling exhausted, doing that regularly. And then eventually a month later, when you've done that many times over getting, getting angry and upset. So, you know, boundaries are huge. They're such a crucial part of healing from, from parentification. If you're interested in helping make a huge impact on other people's lives while also building financial freedom, I'm offering an early bird 50% discount on our integrated attachment theory relationship certification program that will help you become a certified integrated attachment theory relationship coach and build your own thriving practice by the end of 12 weeks. This 12-week on-demand program will help you kickstart your new career by teaching you revolutionary tools and strategies that help clients transform their lives and relationships, build your own coaching practice, and set yourself up for a wait list of clients and financial success. Even if you have no coaching experience, this program will give you very in-depth tools, resources, and confidence to get started in a matter of weeks. And you can learn more information by clicking the link down below. And last but not least, oftentimes um, when you're parentified as a child, you'll you'll store that as like very specific types of meaning. So you'll often make that mean like, well, then I don't matter, or I'm not important, or I nobody cares about me, or I'm unloved, or you know, even things like, oh, I'm bad. Like I, I, if I do anything wrong, I have to over-explain myself all the time because I have to make sure I'm micromanaging everybody's feelings. And we'll have these core wounds that come about because of being exposed to those kinds of circumstances and reconditioning those core wounds, really challenging those ideas, really working through those concepts about yourself and allowing you to stop reigniting those core wounds on a regular basis by putting yourself last. So you're making yourself unimportant. You're making yourself don't matter. You are or shaming yourself and, and giving yourself such a hard time if you ever make a mistake and then you reignite that I am bad wound or I am not worthy, you know, by, by treating yourself like you do matter, like you are innocent, like you are good, like you are worthy, like by treating yourself that way, that also is so important when it comes to healing. So this is honestly just scratching the surface of this topic. Like I could go so much more into detail, but I want to know from you, like, is this something that you experienced? Where are you at with this? Do you want more support and resources on this? Do you want more discussions around this? Because it's such a powerful topic that I think so easily 
um, just doesn't have enough attention or validation around it. And it is a really painful thing and it is a challenging thing to heal from. So let me know how you're doing in the comments. Let me know what you want to see or what some of your experiences were. And I will absolutely create more content around this as needed. Um, and thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time here or you hang out here sometimes, but haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe down below and stick around. Um, and I really can't wait to see you in the next video and hear honestly what some of your, your feedback is or what some of your experiences were around this topic. Thank you so much for watching.